Good morning, friends. Happy New Year. Hope you guys are having a great New Year so far. Let's worship the Lord God. Thanks so much for this time that I can gather with my friends. And even though it's online, Lord, we're still united in one spirit, Lord. So we worship you today. We glorify you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. during uh, COVID time when we were really in the early stages of it and on lockdown was writing a bunch of worship songs and been working with the worship team the last couple months to just kind of fine tune them and we had a practice this last week and and we're bringing you an original worship song here this week it's called uh, You Are hope you guys enjoy it hope that it blesses you Um, hope that it'll bring you into a place where you can really worship God today
Parkside Church. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Would you please take a moment and go to parksidechurch.cc slash Sunday and fill out a community card. It lets us know that you're here and also fill out a prayer request. Just a reminder, this Saturday, January 16th is church day here and we can help uh, lay the new artificial turf. If you'd like to give to Parkside, you can give online at parksidechurch.cc slash give or through Venmo at my Parkside Church. Today, we're on week two of our series called Cats, Dogs, and the Glory of God. And we have a guest preacher, the other Jim, teaching today. Enjoy. Hey, Parkside. You hear me share often really cool stories of how we're seeing uh, disciples being made in our area. But you might think sometimes, well, that's Jim. He's kind of weird that way. Uh, that just couldn't be in my life. And so we're wanting to, hey, so there's actually a number of people who are getting to be a part of really cool stories of making disciples in our area. Um, and one of them is my wife. And so I want to uh, Rachel to share a little bit with you about a recent story. So every Sunday morning we go down to this neighborhood and we walk the streets looking for people to talk to and to ask him if we can pray for them and then we try to share a Bible story with them and see where the conversation goes. And I just had to be honest, I kind of hate it. Like it is so out of my comfort zone. I am an introvert. Um, I'm okay with talking with people I know, but talking to strangers uh, is just awkward and weird. However, I do believe that this is something that um, God commands us to do, to, 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 to make disciples and to tell others about him. And so um, not only am I supporting my husband in doing it, but I am um, trying to be obedient to, to God and trying to grow in this. I feel like we all have areas to, to grow in and, and this is if God wants me to do it, then I'm going to do it. So Sunday morning, uh, our family was walking down the street and we found this woman who was out walking and we said hi. It was clear that she spoke uh, Spanish was her stronger language. Um, so we hola, hola. And then Jim, who is more outgoing, um, took the plunge and asked if we, we could pray for her. And she, the demeanor in her face, you could just tell she was open. And she said, yes, yes. Uh, my husband is a painter and he hasn't had work for two months. Uh, we could pray for her job, uh, for him to get a job. And uh, so we said, yeah. And Jim said, well, can I share a Bible story with you first? And she said, oh, yes. And long story short, she was just so open and so excited about it um, that she invited us to come back to her house uh, that afternoon so that we could share with her husband as well. So on our way to Sunday night church, we stopped by her house uh, and again, she and her husband speak very limited English. Me and my husband, we speak very limited Spanish, um, but it was really fun seeing my high school Spanish come back into practice. 
And through through uh, both of our, our attempts, we were able to lead her husband through a Bible study. And during that, uh, one of her um, teenage sons came and he spoke really good English, so he was able to help. And then uh, a few minutes later, her other high school um, son came and they all did the Bible study with us. And you could just tell they wanted to know more about God uh, and the Bible. So it was awesome and <clears throat> I got her phone number and we said that we would keep in touch. And then fast forward two days later, I was still excited and I was just praying, God, would you help him get a job? Like I know the economy is tough right now, um, but can you just show up? And Tuesday night she uh, called and left a message and said, call me back. So I called her back and again, we're trying to figure out the language thing, but she said, Rachel, my husband, he got two jobs lined up today, two. And I get goosebumps just talking about it right now. God didn't just show up with, with a little job. He, he showed up abundantly. Um, she said, when can you come back to my house again? I wanna, I wanna learn more about God. I wanna study the Bible more. So we're gonna go back and visit her Sunday. God is doing cool things. And he took me and my not very good uh, out of my comfort zone and he just, exploded and said if you give me a little bit i will give you and a whole lot and i'll bless others through you and so it's pretty exciting that is so rad the mission of parkside is to introduce people to jesus and empower them to be his followers in north county the west and the world this is what god put us on the planet to do um and in the last bunch of years i've had a theme for the year that's more more kind of like jim's theme and then like but then becomes our whole church's theme and this last year or just in the last little while God's given me one, and it's the most profound, deep, <laughs> the exact opposite of that I've ever had. This this is the theme that I'm running with for 2021. God. That's our theme, God. We're, we're going to be spending time looking at the glory of God, the spirit of God, the word of God, the kingdom of God. And really, you could say, well, those are kind of some of the basics, aren't they, Jim? But isn't it true that, man, if we don't get the, the basics, and there's actually way more depth than we think, then, uh, man, we can get in trouble. This um, In our relationship, we drive on the 76 a lot because our house is near there. And Rachel's had the conversation with me maybe a million times of like, hey, Jim, I think you're driving a little bit too quick today. And I usually respond in humility and kindness, you know, and say, <laughs> backseat driver. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. I've got like hardly any tickets in my life. You know, I know what's going on and I'm, and I'm fine. And I'm conscious of the road. Uh, and then this last week, I got a ticket on the 76 driving by myself. Uh, for the exact speed she always tells me not to drive. And uh, here's the deal. So we can get the basics uh, on our own. And man, there's incredible just joy and going, okay, I got to be humble. I got to learn a little bit differently. Or we can learn them the hard way. And uh, man, we want as a church, hey, get this, man. God's called us to make disciples. God's called us to give him glory. God's given us the Holy Spirit to give us power. God's given us the word of God to speak actively into our lives. That's where we're going really for these next bunch of weeks and months for this year. And so last week, uh, as we're kicking off the year with the glory of God, a good friend of mine named Jim Thurber taught, and you'll see this kind of starts in the middle of a talk because we broke it into two. We just said, hey, we, we want to get all of it. Of uh, what, is it, what is the glory of God and what does this look like in our life? I'm so excited for us as Jim shares with us again today. Love you guys. It's often too easy to serve God for what he can give you and me. You know, he, become, he becomes a heavenly Santa Claus or bellhop. It's often too easy to serve God for what He can give us rather than who He is. You'll hear people from time to time say, Okay, God, I'll serve you, but first, let me marry the guy of my dreams, the girl of my dreams. God, if you give me the woman I want, the man I want, all right, then I'll serve you. Lord, education is important. My parents have put great emphasis here. So let me graduate with an honorable degree, and then, Lord... You're mine, or I'm yours. <laughs> and let me have that job, Lord. You know I've got to build, I've got to build that retirement account. I got to put money away so that when I retire, 62, 65, whatever, Lord, you do that. Give me a good job, and then I'll dedicate myself to you. Unfortunately, too often our goals become primary. His glory becomes secondary. Attending church is a prime way to learn to obey God. And those who have picked up their cross eagerly learn to obey so they can skillfully claim God's name. The non-cross carriers, however, want to obey God too, but not for the same reason. They want to trade their obedience for God's gifts. It's a bartering game. This obscures God's glory. 
people have difficulty seeing how great God is when we take that attitude. Faithful church attendance can also help us to know who God is and what he has done. That's called theology. The, Greek word for God, ology, Greek suffix for the study of, the study of God. Too often, however, our doctrine resembles meology, not theology. It's, it, it's like being a mercenary. We ask, what do I need to do to get God to give me what I want? Yeah, I'll glorify God as long as he ends up glorifying me here. Why do you want to go to heaven? Most people would say, hell, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> I want to escape hell. Could there be an even better reason? Sure. So God can enjoy you and me forever. So do determine to finish well, for God's sake, as well as your own joy. Think what finishing will mean to Jesus. So often people say, rewards? How selfish to live for rewards. Are you kidding? Think what it's going to mean to Jesus to reward somebody like you, somebody like me. Wow. God gives us the power to live for his glory. So if he can reward us, that just glorifies him all the more. And they will offer their crowns before his throne, saying, you are worthy, O Lord, uh, o our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power since you created all things. Think what finishing well will mean to your life while you're here on earth. All will be done to help people understand God truthfully. God passed in front of Moses and called out God, God, a God of mercy and grace, endlessly patient, so much love, so deeply true, loyal, in the love for a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. Still, he doesn't ignore sin. Everything, in other words, was made to exclaim God's name. Suppose you're out in the woods and you hear this American bird, this chickadee, singing. It would sound like this. But you know what that bird is really singing? Everything was made for the glory of God. God made a universe to exclaim his magnificent name. In fact, the self-crucified, the cross carrier, see creation as a grand display of God's glory. It's as though God was standing behind a stained glass window, radiating his glory through that glass. Each piece of glass is called a tessera. Now, an artist will take those little pieces of glass and will arrange them based on size, shape, color, texture into a mosaic in order to communicate, in order to leave a message. It could be something floral. It could be mystical. It could even be theological, completely up to the artist. Well, God's creation is like a stained glass window. Each tessera, each piece of creation, uniquely reveals the glory, the reputation, the greatness of God. You go outside at night, you take your telescope, you capture the planet Saturn in that scope, and you say, wow, look at that planet. Look at the banded rings. Look at the color. Look at the organization. Wow. Well, don't stop there. Take another breath and say, God, the planet Saturn, <laughs> It reminds me of you, Lord, because you are organized. You are beautiful. You know what God says? I love it. I love it when you get the message. I put Saturn in space so that every time you look at it, you're reminded of me. And then you see the moon come up. It's bright. It's full. It blankets the entire landscape with white, bright light. And we gasp. <gasps> oh, it takes my breath away. It's so beautiful. It's so magnificent. Well, don't stop there. Take another breath and say, God, the moon, it reminds me of you because you're magnificent. You're big, you're full, you're wonderful, God. You know what God says? I love it. I love it when you get the message. I put the moon in the sky to remind you of me. The universe, our solar system, it's all there. It's vast. It's great to continually remind you and me that our God is not only transcendent, he is outstandingly magnificent and he loves it when we recognize that or you go to the, the market wow see all that fruit all those vegetables and you begin to imagine 
eating and your taste buds are dancing and you're having such pleasure in eating. And you say, oh, this is wonderful. It tastes so good. It's nutritious. And it makes me just want to enjoy life more. Well, don't stop there. Take another breath and say, God, I can't believe how great you are. You made taste buds. You made fruit, you made vegetables, they're all compatible, I can digest them, they're nutritious, oh, what a God. And God says, I love it. I love it when you get the message. I put taste buds in your mouth, so every time you chop down, you're reminded of me. This can be our theme song. Jesus, it's all about you. But God has an opponent. You know who he is. His name is Satan. Guess what he's dedicated to doing? Just the opposite of what God does. Satan could ask himself, uh, Oh, how, how can I keep those Christians from focusing on God's glory alone? They'll never go for straight Satan worship, false, false religions. Forget your glory, Lord. Let's just focus on your desire to bless us. In truth, God, make your only focus blessing us, me, and mine. But God, what I really want is money. Bless me with money so I can feel secure and buy more stuff, God. The focus on money and things is constant. Health and wealth theology, name it and claim it. God wants you rich. Trust God to supply all your wants with his riches. If you die before age 70, somehow you got cheated. Satan knows we think this way and he capitalizes on it. Now, which card should I pull out for them? I know. <laughs> Do you want more things? I'll get them to want more things. Yes, materialism. <laughs> One of my favorites. We changed the music. Jesus, it's all about things. And Lord, how about better relationships? You know, the wife and I were arguing all the time. If you just clean that up, I can begin to enjoy life. Yeah, Lord, a life free of stress and full of fun and happiness. That's what I want. So what's the essence of a non-crucified life? Me. We want to go from birth to death in the safest, softest, easiest, most entertaining, laudable, trouble-free, peaceful way possible. But cross carriers are different. They accept all things were created through him and for him, not me. They look at the scriptures and always ask this question for, first, 
What does this passage mean to God? Here's an example. Let the water be filled with living creatures. So here's God. He's creating. And he stands in the surf. And there's a fish. He cre finishes creating the fish. He puts life in it and begins to flop around in his hand. It jumps out and begins to swim away. God says, hey, fishy, you come back here. The fish comes back. And what does God do? He takes out his divine paintbrush and his palette. And he gives that fish a gold base, blue tint, white stripes with black outline. The angels in heaven are saying, wow, God, this is fantastic. What coloration. You are terrific, God. And God says, I love it. I love it when you angels get the message. I created fish to remind you of me. And God says, you know, I had so much fun making that fish, I'm going to make another one. This one, however, great big white polka dots on its belly, green splotches on the back, and whoosh, right under the eye, a Nike strike. And again, the angel, they go crazy. God, we didn't know you had it in you. This is outstanding. This is what. And again, God says, I love it when you get the message. Everything was made to reflect favorably on me. So God's creativity, however, was not limited color. You know what kind of an animal this is? No, it's not a seahorse. It's a sea dragon. God said to the angels, I love sea dragons. The angels say, what? You love sea dragons? Yeah. Why, God? Why do you love sea dragons? God says, because half the world's population loves sea dragons. Really, God? Which half of the earth's population loves sea dragons? God says, the women. The women? God, why do women love sea dragons? And God says, because. The males get pregnant and carry the babies. We, however, are so focused on the non-crucified lifestyle we fail to acclaim, praise God's name in the evidence that's all around us every day. So if you can look at a golden mountain and remind you of the golden God we worship. Define crucified, cross-carrying Christian. What's the purpose of creation? List three areas in which you can acclaim, praise God's name in the next 24 hours. Be honest, give an example of you missing an opportunity to acclaim God. Hey, our goal is always transformation, not just information. And so I wanna leave us with two questions before we sing a closing worship song and then get out of here. The, the first one is, hey, is there any confession of like where in your life would you say there's has been opportunities for you to give God glory and you've really like missed it? I mean, like you see the beautiful creation, but it doesn't pay much, you don't notice it much. Or you never like give God focus for or ways that God is working and you don't actually stop and go God that really is you thank you or blessings in your life or attributes that describe God you don't praise him you don't make him more famous in your life any ways you go man I need to confess I haven't been doing that uh, and then second this is the more important one would be so how are we going to course correct hey this week how are you going to practically give God glory discuss this in your living room maybe even press pause on this right now as you're watching uh, before we go into our closing worship song place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be.
place I would rather be No place I would rather be Than hearing your love Hearing your love You are sent Waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living With you I've made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes 